Hi, this is Chris from the Stephanie Miller Show. Please enjoy this exclusive clip from Political Voices Network. I mean, I, you know, and I love this. Frank Conniff said Tim Walls might be too progressive, uh, might be too progressive for average Americans, according to millionaire cable news pundits, based on their one-on-one -on -one grassroots exchanges with other millionaire cable news pundits in a wide cross section <laughs> of Midtown Manhattan green rooms. <laughs> I mean, it's just every, I feel like we have, we're in this period too, where we just don't give an F what, what so-and-so pundit or this or that says. This is just an organic grassroots movement, isn't it? Well, I think you guys might have missed my, uh, my blistering exchange with, uh, you know, millionaire journalist pundit who lives in a green room, McKay Coppins, yesterday, who came out and put this ridiculous tweet out that... You know, he's talking to all these liberals and they're almost like the Republicans and their belief that that that, uh, that J.D. Vance had uh, relations with a couch and that they're delusional and all this. <laughs> and when I came back and said, no, we know it's a joke, uh, but, you know, you, you know, the other guys are supporting the end of democracy, dictatorship and fascism. And he goes, that's an unhinged rant. It's like, are you kidding me? Are you going to gaslight me into believing that the last eight years of, as I said in one other tweet, the, the, the most documented pathological liar, single most documented liar in all of America's Thank you. history. None of his, all, right. all of his attacks are lies. At least we know it's a, it's a joke. They don't, they can't right. stand but, humor, <laughs> right? Yeah, but Stephanie, they, te but Stephanie. These people, January 6th and all these other incidents, they plan to act on their delusions. They don't think it's a joke. They think that, you know, that overthrowing the government and creating their own version of America is the way they're going to do it. They're going to act on it. We talk about a couch and you people lose your, you know, shizmet. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, this is the difference between us. And you know what? Not a one of them can get a, get a joke, uh, yeah. you know, can hit them on the bum. So I think we need to keep up this happy warrior fight because one, it's a happy, and two, <laughs> it's going to be a fight, and we're going to keep this sprint going all the way to the end. I don't think I've ever seen your teeth before; they're lovely. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Ow, I was laughing my butt off during that whole show. Ah, uh, well, you know, and I said to you Saturday night, I'm like, oh my God, Malcolm, you're going to have to write a whole nother book. Um, Carol Lenig, you know, the Washington Post reporter. Yes. <laughs> said, here's why it was the most serious allegation of a bribe in White House history. One, it was based on oh jaw-dropping CIA intelligence that indicated Egypt's president sought in 2016 to illegally inject $10 million to help elect Trump. Uh, number two, the lead came from a reliable CIA informant and was corroborated by other U.S. intelligence operations. Three, investigators then discovered a $10 million cash withdrawal in January 2017 from a key Egyptian spy agency account that seemed to validate the intel. I mean, I yeah. we're so exhausted from his crime we're just like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here we have a report from a trusted journalist that Donald Trump took a $10 million cash bribe from the Egyptian uh, president, CC, And then part two of that story, it was delivered in cash, 200 pounds of $100 bills. The CIA tracked it. Other government agencies tracked it. Then the attorney general, Bill Barr, ordered Mueller to drop the investigation of it during the Mueller in report investigation. And right there, oh, and then immediately afterward, Donald Trump's campaign suddenly appears with $10 million cash, right? And comes out and, uh, you know, uh, says that CC is an awesome guy. It's a freaking bribe, and it needs to be investigated, and they need to put it and, on the list for the other two. And three Bill things. Barr needs he to be investigated. Well. He not only made the Mueller investigation go away, he completely lied about that. He obviously made this go away. There's got to be some you know consequences. I, I look forward to the trials, okay, yeah. after, uh, you know, President, you know, Harris, uh, who, by the way, uh, has been appointed queen by the Supreme Court. She could literally order yeah. this investigation, mm -hmm. yeah. order it, and it would be lawful. So, you know, look out for what you wish for. Exactly. Now, this wouldn't be a Malcolm Nance segment unless you made us our pants. So your piece is uh, ah. uh, Israel-Iran war coming. 2.0 is coming yeah. in uh, maybe hours. Okay, Malcolm. <laughs> that was frightening. <laughs>
<laughs> he wrote, sometime within the next 24 to 48 hours, President, Vice President Kamala Harris will be pulled aside or woken up, and these words will be whispered to her. Defense intelligence is watching the movement of 100 Iranian ballistic missile launchers uh, uh, come out of their warehouses. Um, it, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I won't tell. Like, just go ahead. <laughs> yeah, well, the problem uh, is I wrote 100. It's like 250 right now. Mm -hmm. um the iranians now what happened in between the time that i wrote that and today is iran is doing what we call a strategic pause they think that they are getting um the advantage by keeping the israelis at a high level of alert and keeping the stress levels high by not attacking it was assessed that they would have attacked monday the president was in the situation room for that so was vice president harris uh, but they have sworn that they are going to do a massive attack on Israel. Israel, way back in April, Netanyahu said, if you kill Israeli citizens, you target Israeli citizens, we are going to destroy your nuclear weapons and ballistic missile program. So this thing could spiral out of control immediately. Um, a squadron of F-22s arrived in England yesterday. We have aircraft carriers on the way. This could become a huge crisis overnight overnight you know what we need to do is put a traitor back in office immediately that, everything's great <laughs> did you have any thoughts on him congratulating putin on the hostage deal did you have any thoughts <laughs> oh geez. well it was part for the course i mean you know Donald i left Trump malcolm nance speechless Yay. <laughs> i'm sorry go ahead what oh no, no it's, it's it's part for the course everything he does he comes out and he makes a confession yeah because he is a traitor's rat thank you, know? you. Is that uh, B word? Is that my beloved? So now, is that my beloved Hudson River behind you? It is not. This is lovely Shroon Lake, New York. Oh, okay. and it is beautiful out here today. And you shouldn't have left. All right, I thought it was my <laughs> Croton on the Hudson. <laughs> All right, um, Malcolm Hudson. That's way down south. <laughs> this, this has got power boats. Oh, fun! And bears. Um, and thank... live bears. And bears. Bears. A live ones. <laughs> Living bears. Yeah, really. Is RFK anywhere? Keep them away. By the way, Twitter loved my joke that I got no love here for. When I don't get the respect I'm entitled to, I tweet it, Malcolm. And I just said, Christy Nome, I just shot a puppy in the face. RFK Jr., hold my bear. See, oh, that's funny. I hold my bear. That's fell funny. on my butt when I saw that joke yesterday. Thank you, I Malcolm. Don't, it. don't it patronize her. Awesome. Yo, don't, it's don't, a great joke. don't. Hold my bear. Why can't I get the respect I'm entitled to? I love you, Malcolm Nance. we're not one of your fans. You have good taste. You have good love taste, Malcolm Nance. I love you. Goodbye. Thanks, Malcolm. <laughs> <laughs> 40, hold my bear. <laughs>